Good morning, afternoon, or good evening, folks. I'm your host and guide, Chris Roberts. I'm going to take you on a tour of the underground to help you prepare for what's really out there. Whether you're on the front lines battling the latest threats or leading the overall defensive strategy within your organization, my focus is to help you uncover the best ways, means, and methods to effectively and efficiently use actual threat intelligence within your company, providing you with more insights and practical ways to identify threats and reduce risks before they become incidents. Ready to dive in? Good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening, and uh, welcome to another episode of the Dr. Dark Web series. We are doing a C-suite talk this week, which actually we're doing a C-suite and an animal talk at this point in time, because Milo has decided he's got to be part of this at this point in time. As always, thanks a ton to Danny for uh, helping to coordinate, organize, and put this on and be part of this whole thing. But I'm also uh, hugely, hugely, hugely uh, happy to welcome a, a bloody good friend and a brother in the name of Gary Hayslip. Gary, please. How you doing? I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm happy to be here and I'm glad I'm seeing Milo. I haven't seen him in a while. He's gotten so big. <laughs> when he comes in at almost eye level, it's like, yeah. you know, there's going to be problems. He also knows well, there's snacks. This is the biggest problem. Well, the thing is, is when, when, you, when you give him a snack, I'm expecting to see your hand disappear. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> He's awesome. How are you doing? How's everything going? How's life? How's the universe? And all that kind of good craziness. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's doing good. I mean, the, um, I think like many of us, you know, especially many of us CISOs over the last few years, I was getting burned out. And I had plenty of dark days last year where I was just exhausted and just didn't want to play anymore. And I had seriously contemplated uh, walking away from the industry. But, you know, you, you know, you kind of refocus, you know, you kind of recalibrate, you know, spending time with peers locally in San Diego and writing our latest book and just kind of having fun again, you know, mm -hmm. as, you know, COVID winds down and we start meeting each other again. And then, I think I'm like many of us that, um, the last few years, especially, you know, for those of us working in cyber have been really hard, you know, cause there has been no slowdown and, you know, it's been nothing but work, 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 you know, and, and just looking forward to, you know, meeting people again, looking forward to enjoying, you know, our community that we have again. And so it's just, uh, it's been extremely busy. I mean, we've, we've totally re-architected, you know, our corporate networks here and, you know, I've redone the teams and just thoroughly having, you know, a good time. And the fact that, you know, I'm working with startups now and I'm on boards and getting a chance to see some really cool, you know, technologies, you know, which is a big thing, you know, you and I are into is just seeing just the amazing stuff people, what people do with things, yeah, you know, and, and the stuff that runs through your head is like, you know, okay, how the hell would I fucking hack this? Or how would I, you know, <laughs> how would this be, you know, or how could this be used against me? Or, you know, and, and you start running these, you know, these what if scenarios. And uh, so it's, it's, it's been fun. I mean, you know, you've, I've come out on the other end and I'm feeling better for it. And, you know, it's, it's brighter and I'm enjoying it and the family's doing well. And so, yeah, it's, it's been good. Good. Yeah. It's, it's been a rough one. I mean, you, you said, it. I mean, there's been no slowdown. I think that's the only slowdown we've seen really has probably been in the last couple of months, unfortunately, because of the conflict, which is they took a break from us. And then when, it, and, and almost everybody basically focused on, you know, our, our friends out on the, in Eastern Europe side of the world. And I mean, that's really been it, but even that's now slowed down and the focus is now coming back again. It's. It's, uh, it's interesting to see the intelligence and the data feeds go from, you know, initially it was like, okay, Hey, we're all going to support the one side. We're all going to do this. And then you saw the, the, the split down the territories. And then it was, I mean, in some ways we got a bit of a breather, but that breather has been short lived because everybody, you know, it's, it's yeah. The last two years have definitely been rough. No two ways about it. It's been interesting. I mean, you know, the, the nice thing about hanging out where the stuff I'm doing on, on the Intel side of the world has been watching those ebbs and flows. You know, when mm -hmm. we first went into the, 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 the COVID shenanigans, you know, there were definitely some indications from a number of the groups that they wouldn't touch healthcare for a while, but unfortunately those, those white flags didn't last too long. But you and I both know they're going to go where the money's at. Oh, so I, that, yeah, know, sure. yeah. 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 It is what it is. It's now you said it, it's actually interesting because it's, this kind of leads into some of the part of the conversation, as you said, you're now, you're doing a lot more work with like startups and smaller organizations. And arguably that's like 
that's pre-money. That's where that hockey stick for so many is going to be like this. And all of a sudden in theory, it's going to go like this. I mean, how are you, or are you using anything from like the information intelligence side of the world to actually help you make decisions and help sort of help the organization make mm -hmm. decisions as to like, which ones to go after where the market's going and where everything's going. I'm fascinated by that. You know, it's, I have to admit, it's really interesting. Like my organization, the, you know, the, the partners and managing partners, everybody above there are specific technologies or specific things that they're looking for. You know, just almost like anybody, you know, any of these companies that invest, you know, my job, you know, I do operational, you know, I'm running, you know, internal cybersecurity, but I also provide virtual CISO services to our portfolio companies. And then I also do due diligence on new investments. And then, you know, if any of the teams and if, I, if any of our deal teams are looking at companies that are cybersecurity related, 99% of the time I get pulled in. And, and I'll sit with them. And a lot of times it's because they want my opinion on the technology. They want my opinion on, okay, if they're selling this to a CISO, is this plausible? You know, the, you know, even there's a lot of times where I'll reach out to my own, you know, to our community and talk to our peers and ask, okay, who's using these guys? What do you think about this? You know, um, because it might be something new that I haven't looked at. And I do, if, if there's something that they're interested in that, that, you know, that our, our deals teams are interested in, or even myself as a, a, you know, a consumer of services, you know, cause I'm running my own security program and everything here. I always look at from a threat Intel piece, you know, what's going on with this, who's targeting it. You know, I look at, you know, um, have they had any breaches lately? You know, I'm also, you know, if I can find data as to, you know, what APIs are they using, you know, what you know, and stuff like that, or if any of those had any breaches or any issues recently, you know, I try to get as much data as I can, just so I can kind of understand if I'm looking at this technology, if I was to use it, how much more risk exposure, you know, am I bringing in, you know, right. to my program? Yeah. No, I'm just saying, you know, we're hundred percent SaaS, you know, so I'm full cloud what? and I've got all of these SaaS apps that are integrated that yeah. we're sharing data with, you know, and so each one of those is, you know, it's a, it's, it's a big question about, you know, the, cause it's their infrastructure that you're trusting. It's their yeah. configurations. It's their operations, you know, that you're trusting. I use Intel a lot to, yeah. to look them up and do research on them. That's the, it was interesting because we were talking about this the other day, which is, you know, in some ways that SaaS environment is also that. It's your supply chain because it's, you're reliant mm -hmm. on it for so many different areas and you, it, it's hard to knock on the door of every single one of those and go, hello, I'd like to, I'm going to go through my continual testing. I want to pen test. You want to break into you. They're like, I say, get lost. So it's, it's at that point, you almost have to rely on everything outside to try to understand the risks you're about to enter into. It's, um, and then you've got to be able to get that information, disseminate the information, you know, understand the information to make a decision on it. It's, it's, yeah, it's an interesting world on that one. Yeah. You, I mean, you, know, we, you, you pull what Intel you can get and then there's like some services or whatever, because most of the stuff we're dealing with is apps, right? Yeah. And so there are certain services I can, I'll reach out to and see, have they tested these apps? And if they have, I'll pull the report to see, you know, what were issues that they found, what were, you know, how, how are they recommended, you know, um, things that you need to be aware of it, you know, as the, Hey, they store data in third party countries or, you know, the country, you know, we think the company that's developed this app probably isn't financially stable, you know, which, you know, cause they're so relatively new, which is something you need to worry about because are you going to be able to get your data back if they go under? So, you know, you, you kind of pull these. So from an operational standpoint, you start thinking, you know, not only have they been hacked, but you also wonder, is the company viable enough? There's going to be around long enough for you to be able to use it, you know, within your platform for your, you know, for your employees to be able to use it. And so, you know, you, you, you pull this information together to kind of, you know, to make a decision, you know, and a lot of times for us, you know, in our environment, you know, with 300 plus SaaS apps, you know, and IT doesn't own them all. The business owners are in various departments, but we have a whole right. process that we go through where they're reviewed. You know, the business case for a new one is reviewed. The risks for a new one is reviewed. And I mean, you, know, you have to go ahead and, and get that intelligence together. You know, have they done a SOC to, you know, right, you know, I need to see more than just the executive report. 
you know, I want to know, you know, did you have any deficiencies and have you fixed those? You know, do you have a recent bridge letter if the SOC 2 is like two years old? You know, there was at least somebody's looked at you. You know, you, you've got to do the, you know, you got to do your due diligence. I wonder, because it's interesting, because when we have typically, it's always interesting because when you typically have the conversations about intelligence, threat intelligence, everybody thinks of it from just purely like a breach standpoint or an issue standpoint or all of this side of it. it it's very much almost, I say, a negative side of it, but it's always that adversarial discussion. Your, you know, the conversation we're having, yes, we, there's elements of that, but it's almost a voyage of discovery discussion as well. Because that's one thing that we we don't always talk about, but it's something we have the conversations with sometimes. And I mean, you're you're almost like the core example of that because you're having to serve it so many different parts of your organization and having to bring so much information in, put it into intelligence, and then help everybody understand. It. And it's not necessarily from a negative standpoint. The financial and the just the business viability what is is huge on itself. I mean. I don't know how many organizations, probably not many, are actually set up to effectively do that. Yeah, it's, I mean, to me, it's, I mean, you pull in this data and, you know, you, you build out a stack, you got all these different technologies that you've integrated, you know, you're looking at new technologies, each of them, you know, you're pulling specific data about them. You're still pulling data about the stack as a whole. Then you're pulling data about the threat actors that are actually trying to attack the organization. You're pulling data about, you know, the vulnerabilities and different issues that you have. Then you'll pull data about the specific vertical that you work in, say financial services. Um, and you do, you put all this, you know, this data together and then you turn it into information, you know, right. stuff that you can actually act with, stuff yeah. that actually has context that makes sense. And then you flip it again. And you got to go ahead and turn it into a business context. You know, why is this valuable? What am I supposed to do with this? How am I supposed to act on this? Do you need more money? Do you need more FTEs? Are you going to shift the team and from a different focus? Um, and so, yeah, there's like stages that yeah. you go through. And the biggest thing, you know, that I, I, you know, when I talk with executives is to get them to understand that this is a life cycle. And that's continuous. You know, you're, yeah. you know, you have the management of the security stack. You have the strategic piece where you're looking long term, where changes that you need to make and ways that you're going to support the business as the business grows. But then you also have this whole tactical side where you're taking these various data points, and these various data points actually help you mature your stack. They help yeah. you mature your team. They help you mature what you're looking at. You know, so that you don't look at false positives. So you don't look at things that, all right, yeah, this is a threat, but the threat is so low. Right. But I've got these other issues that are actively being used right now against people within the financial services sector where I work at. I'm really concerned about those. And those are the ones that my executives are probably going to ask about. So I better have an answer on those. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. We were talking, Danny and I were having a conversation about this the other evening on one of the, one of the prior podcasts, which was, you know, all around the contextualization of the, of the data and where it's applicable and how it's applicable and everything else. I love, it's really, now here's a question for you. I mean, you're, you're almost having to do this on a very, very cyclical basis. Do you literally go in, I mean, we all talk about intelligence packets. We all talk about, oh, we're going to build an Intel packet. Do you literally go in with a tick list and say, Hey, look, I want to see the I where can I find information on the financials? There's a private Then literally that tick list, do you have one of those pretty much so put together? Yeah, we've, I mean, you know, cause we're like, you know, we're a member of FSI SAC, so I'm pulling mm -hmm. data from there. I'm on several different lists with CISA. You know, I, um, you know, I'm a member of InfraGuard, so I'm pulling stuff from there and, and what the FBI, you know, sends over. Um, yeah, I'm getting to know my counterparts in the UK with the yeah. FCA so I can pull data on that side as well. You know, we have an office in Singapore, so we work with Maznet, mm. the Monetary Authority of Singapore, and they yeah. do some excellent threat intel for oh, that yeah, region. Oh, some amazing and, stuff. And so I, you know, I, I pull data as well there. And then like our home office in Tokyo shares information back and forth as well. And so, you know, you get different, you know, so I get different areas where I'm pulling information and then we get information from our various vendors, you know, and some of them, the platforms themselves have just full teams that do nothing but thread Intel within the particular platform. And so it's, you know, honestly, there's sometimes there's more data than you know what to do with, you know, the, uh, <laughs> yes. you, know, you know what yes. I'm saying? Yeah, you know, the good thing is, is like, is like my, my deputy, she's prior Air Force, 
you know, she worked in, you know, in cyber warfare and on the, on the dark side and knows how to write these types of reports. She's awesome. And she freaking loves reading, um, you know, and she, she wants me to stand up a tip and, and to go ahead and start, you know, doing all of these, you know, cause she's all into doing, you know, the, uh, the threat intel on stuff. And then, you know, and then she does this really amazing report step-by-step, step, all these different things that happened. And I'm having flashbacks like I'm still back in uniform, you know, when I, when I, when I read her reports. <laughs> She's so good. But that's what I'm saying is that, you know, that, and that's been kind of our approach as we pull this data together. You know, we collect, we try to go ahead and funnel it down to specific things that are really focused on us. We have a third-party SOC that we leverage, and we work with them extensively, and we've even set up a Slack channel with them so we can talk with them back and forth. And nice. same thing, we share data back and forth. We make sure that they understand what's critical for us to what we're watching. But at the same time, they're sharing data with us, you know, Hey, we're, um, you know, we're building filters for this and we're watching for these, you know, IOCs. And I find that those partnerships are critical, you know, because you're going like for us doing the third party SOC, I pretty much realized, okay, I'm not going to get permission to get the, the FTEs with the specialized skill sets because I've built SOCs before and they're expensive, you know, just trying to get the the carbon-based life forms to manage the stock, you know, yeah. um, it's better to go ahead and leverage a third party, you know, and, and instead, you know, if, if I get the funding for that, then I can go ahead and use, you know, resources and efforts for other projects. Right. But it's, but yeah, it's, you know, it's pulling these partners together and then all of us on the same page as to what, you know, what Intel is important for us. And then we use that Intel to make decisions. You said it, and, and it's a different way of looking at it. You're not pulling a vendor together. You're not having a vendor do something. It's a partner. That's a huge shift, and, and I'm seeing more and more of it. And it's something, I mean, you and I have talked a little bit about, but we've talked about it on here as well. This is not a, this is something I want to see more and more of a shift of in our industry. Because, I mean, to your point, you're literally handing the keys to the kingdom or the keys to the front door over to a third party. You don't just want to hand it over, chuck it over the fence and hope for the best. It's like, Hey, I'm giving you the keys to the front door. Y'all better be marching right alongside me for the entirety yeah. of this organization. I mean, this is, and that whole sharing of information and intelligence is huge. And, and yeah. honestly, we actually reviewed like, you know, six different, you know, socks as a service when we were reviewing them. And the, the one that we went for, it was because of that. I was looking for someone that I told them, I said, look, we're just not going to give you access and then you're going to take off and do everything for us. No, you're going to go ahead and be right there. And we make decisions together. You know, yeah. you're going to review things mm -hmm. and, you know, my staff and I will be looking at what you have and we will make decisions that what we're looking for, what, the, you know, cause, cause we're going to integrate you into almost everything within our SIM, almost everything within our stack. We're going to go ahead and tie into it. And we work, you know, here we work extremely close with the IT team. In fact, I've, I've adopted multiple people on the network team, you know, and everything. And we work really, really close with them. And the same thing, you know, they, they are, they're talking with the SOC as well, you know, and we're sharing data. Hey, this is what we're seeing on our SASE solution that we're using. This is, you know, data that we're pulling and from the threat intel that we have you know, the actors that we think that we're dealing with that we're blocking, you know, that we're just kind of tracking, but yeah, you know, you have to have that partnership. That's something that needs to be on every single bloody slide on our industry's presentations. I hate to say it. You need those partnerships as opposed to just the relationships I see too often, which is, and this, I think is where, you know, this is where to me in some ways, the intelligence side can be that bridge. It can be that, Hey, I've got something and I want to be able to share it with you. Let's sit yeah. down, let's talk, let's communicate. I want to help you. I've got stuff that affects you. It affects you, you know, board level conversations. I mean, that's a huge one. Definitely. Well, when you, I think what it is, is when you speak with executives, you can sit there and, you know, you can do the FUD thing, but you can only do that so much. You know, right. for me, it's more of, look, this is who's knocking on the door, you know, and these are people that specifically target our industry. This is how horrific. You know, these types of incidents can be, this is obviously we have to report them, you know, and who, and what, you know, agencies we have to report them to, you know, here's some alternatives. Here's some ways that I would want to manage it, you know, with this type of data that's coming in about these issues, this is how we can use this data. We can make these changes here. We can secure these services here. You know, we've got people that are on travel. We got offices in 16 different countries. Some of these different countries have different data privacy 
you know, requirements, <laughs> or, you know, this is how we can meet some of these requirements. You know, this is how, you know, if we have discussions with our regulators when we're doing audits, we can prove that we're taking thread intel, that we're taking specific types of data about known, you know, you know known issues, and we're using it to get better. We're using yeah. it to provide value. You know, and, and these are, you know, and so that's, that's what I was doing was I was laying down and what I did was I, I laid down multiple options, you know, and obviously when you lay down the options, you lay down the options, you lay down the value it brings, and then you also right. lay down the costs, you know, yeah. and totally. you know, you kind of go from, and to me, I always do highest to lowest, you know, cause right. I want them to. I want him to take the middle, you know, and so you kind of, you know, having done this enough times, you know, I, I know how to play that. It's it's helping the business see that there's ways that we can we can pull these different types of data, we can pull these different types of services because there are now there are so many different services where you can get sticks and taxi feeds and you can get all this kind of information, and and you can do more with it than just consume it. This is actually probably a useful conversation as well, especially for folks that are listening in on this. Because you have got vendors which is just going to come along with a hose pipe of IP addresses and go, hold on tight, we're about to tell you what's terrible. I'm like, the hell use is that to me? Same thing with all the other stuff. It's like, no, I want context. I need, when you're handing me data, I need to be able to have some level of context. Yes, I'm feeding into a SIM, SOAR, or something else. But I want that context that comes with it. Don't just hand me data because that's useless. Mm -hmm. I don't need to have to do more work because you're trying to hand me intelligence. That, that doesn't work for me. How's, how, when you're looking at all these feeds, give me some thoughts on that. Well, the thing that is, is that you take a look at, you know, from a context perspective, you know, how does it relate to the, the technologies you're using or mm -hmm. the technologies that IT is using or the technologies that the various departments, you know, that you have within the organization are using. Yeah. And to understand that, you have to have relationships with your peers in each of the other business units. You have to know what they're doing, what technologies they use, what data they have, who their partners are, and what they're doing. That information pushes down on the threat intel that you're bringing in, and it helps you tune what's appropriate for you. You know, and then once you pull in this data in, you get it specific to operations within the departments, operations within your stack, operations within the IT stack for the business itself. Then you also have a whole other side of the coin where you got to think, okay, now what the hell am I going to do with it? <laughs> right. You know, yeah. What was I planning on doing with it? Was I building block lists? Was I shutting down ports? Was I going to go ahead and create filters to where if I see traffic from specific countries, shunt? You know, if I was, I, you know, setting it up to where, you know, specific websites that do these kinds of things, I want to be alerted on, but let it roll because I want to collect data on it or to go ahead and block and alert me so I can talk with legal and we can proceed to go ahead and shut down these websites. You know, it's the action piece is what you need to understand. And your teams need to understand that. And if you're doing a third party SOC, they need to understand. They need they to understand, you. okay, my job is just to alert. Or my job is to alert on the 70% and then so the 30% block and notice, you know, yeah. it's, yeah, you know, and so, and that's the, and that actually becomes the more in-depth discussion. Once you have your Intel tuned and you know how it's applicable and you've got the contextual piece for it, now comes the action piece. What are you going to do with it? So that, I mean, that hits one of the biggest frustrations in our industry and one of the biggest things that, that. Uh, we're doing the top 10 list uh, and you just hit on this whole top 10 thing, which is you see so many people going out there and going, I'm going to buy this. Why? Well, because, well, how much do you know about yourself? Because somebody told me it'll fix all of my problems. Oh, darn it. Yeah. I think the interesting thing for me on this one is, is that first thing you said, which is literally it's the know thyself. You know, if you don't know what, if, if you've got all these feeds and all these options, if you don't know what you need, what you're looking at from what you're responsible for, how the heck can you actually go out there and interrogate and have conversations with people about what the hell you need? And not just what you're looking after, but what the business is looking after, what IT is looking after, and everybody else inside the organization. I mean, to me, that's a huge part of it. Yeah. Well, and the thing about it is, is that and it ties more into threat intel too, because I mean, it, it helps you build your security program. It mm -hmm. helps you build budget wise, what you're going to need and probably what you're going to need 18 months out. You know, it helps you 
mature wise your stack and what things need to be integrated or you know it it also helps you understand you know projects that are going on around you and things that are going to impact your team you know are going to impact you know the services and everything you're providing to your organization to me it's just you know i look at it as having eyes wide open yeah. and a 360 view you know the the you know the thing they used to tell us you know when i was you know, when we were active duty, you know, having your head on a swivel, you know, the situational awareness. That's why I look at it is that, you know, it's having that situational awareness because then when you have that situational awareness, when you start pulling thread intel, you pull in the correct thread intel that you need that's applicable, that you're actually going, that becomes information. You're going to do something with it. Yeah. You know? It's, it's huge though. And I, I wish, I mean, this is part of the reason for doing this entire series of podcasts, which is to give people. I guess more data points, more areas to think of, more things to think of before they go out there and, and commit to all these darn feeds for, you know, 12, 24, 36 month flipping contracts and then wonder what the heck are they going to do with it? It's yeah. the, the biggest hope here is like, Hey, take a step back, listen to some of these, understand, understand almost the preparation before you go ahead and go charging off down this, understand the prep work you're, you're going to have to do, you're going to have to roll up your sleeves on some of this one. And get the prep work done and understand the business, the technology, the people before you go off and do something. Well, it's like, you know, hey, I got these threat feeds and I've got all this tune and I know what I'm going to need, but I'm not really doing vulnerability scanning or we don't have patch management set up. Right. So then I'm like, okay, so what are you, so what are you doing with it? <laughs> you know? so I'm only going to use some data. of it, you know? I got data. Yeah. I got data. Yeah, you know, so my, so my thing is okay. Or you've got a hey, you've got your vulnerability program set up to where you're doing your scanning, and you and IT are working together to where you're doing patch management. But you're not working with your third party partners. You're not looking yes. at your third party suppliers. You're not looking across the whole department and all the offices that are integrated. Or you know, you you got 700 employees that are all home, so now you've got 700 networks that you're yeah. wondering about. So yeah, it's, you know, like you said, you got to do your homework, you know, and that's where I'm saying this, that you got to understand what you're going to do with it and how you're going to go ahead and tie it into not just your security stack, but the current operations that you have. And then, you know, and then your partners, the people that, that, that you're working with, they should be, you know, part of that discussion as well. You know, cause honestly, when we started working with the SOC, they had a bunch of other ideas that we hadn't even thought of because they have so many customers. And they've yeah. seen other customers do, you know, interesting things, you know, with, with the data and filters that they built and dashboards that they've done, you know, and different reports that they wanted pulled. And so, yeah, you need to ask that question. So changing tax for a second, keeping it in the mm -hmm. same area, you've written some pretty freaking amazing books on the leadership side, the CISO side and various other things. As you are bringing the message, not just of Intel, but technology and integration into play, how are you having those conversations, not just with the technology side, but with leadership, with the board and everything else, what are you having to do and how are you approaching those conversations? I'm kind of interested. I mean, I know cause I've read some of the damn books, but I want to, I want everybody else to listen and go get the damn book as well. Well, I used to call it fish tacos and beer. Yeah, you know, it was what I used to call it because, because that's what we would do, you know, and it was, you know, it was more of inviting people to lunch and then, right. and then I just sat and listened and let them talk and take notes. And it, it was all about building relationships. It was all about finding champions, you know, and specific people that understood security. And the thing about it is, is that, you know, you're not going to get wins all the time. You're going to have some departments or some executives that are just like, you know, Hey, I'm doing my own thing, but you're going to have some that want to work with you. You're going to have some that get it, you know, that understand security, that understand, you know, that it, it's integrated into what they're doing and they need help. And, and so you take your champions where you can get them and, and you start building step by step, you know, and, and it's a process of you find those people that get security, you partner with them, you work with them, you make your program visible. So people know what your budget is. They know what projects you're working on. They know what frameworks you're using and why and, and where you're going with your team. They know who your team members are. They, they know who you are. You know, you don't, you know, to me, it's, I'm fond of saying that security is not effective if you keep it in a box. You know, security has to be open. And the reason is, honestly, the biggest reason for security to be, to be effective in an organization, you've got to get the culture there to trust you. 
Yeah. You know, and that culture is all carbon based life form stuff. You know, it's all soft skills stuff. It's not technical. You know, mm-hmm. and um, there's a lot of us that suck at that. You know, yes. and so, and so for me, you know, a lot of it is is building that trust. And so, you know, whether it's meeting people for lunch and chatting with them, understanding their issues and what their teams are doing and how you can support them, or whether it's just doing briefings, where I would go ahead and do a lunch briefing with a group of executives, and I just give them the latest info. You know, hey, this is what we had. This is what we've blocked. This is the stuff that we're seeing currently right now within our organization. This is how we track with other, with other companies. You know, within our you know specific sector, and just being honest. You know, so that way they just have a a good snapshot of where we're at with security. You know, and you do kind of briefings like that. Again, it's it's a it's a process of building trust. You know, if you're going to be reporting to the board, you don't walk into a board if you've never done one before. Instead, what you do is you talk to somebody who's presented to the board first so that you can get an idea of who the players are. You can get an idea of the personalities you're going to be dealing with. You can get an idea of what the process is going to be like. If you can, you try to present and try to talk to board members individually. Yep. You know, so again, you're building a relationship. You're talking with them. You're finding out what's important to them. You know, and then after you've done those individual pieces, then when you go before a full board, you're ready. You know who the players are. You understand their thought processes, what's important to them. You know, you understand the flow of specific things, you know, on your slide deck or specific things data-wise you need to bring out. You know, and, you know, these are the issues. This is what you're there for. This is what you need. You're out, you know, and you have five to 10 minutes, you know, and, yeah. but the prep, the prep for that 10 minutes oh, is quite extensive. And again, a lot of it is, is meeting people and building the relationships so they can see what you're doing and why, you know, I mean, I've worked in organizations where they didn't even know what a CISO was, you know, or even why they needed security, you know, and some of these were very large organizations, you know, and again, you start small. You know, and that's one of the big things I've written about and I've talked about is that, you know, building these types of programs, you're going to start small and it's going to take you time. But, you know, you have to, the biggest thing I, you know, I tell them is, you know, you start the, you know, the whole, the walkabout, the whole fish tacos and beer thing, you get out there, you get visible, you start evangelizing why security is important. You work with those people that will work with you. And then at the same time, You've got the other side, you've got the community, you've got your peers that you can reach out and talk to and say, Hey, this is a difficulty I'm having here. How would you, what do you think about approaching this? There's no problem at all. And saying you don't know, you know, what you say is that I've even had times where I've been at a board meeting where I said, you know, sir, I don't know. However, let me get that information and I'll get back to you. When I get that information, do you want me to bring it to you or do you want me to bring it to the whole board? And what time frame do you need it? You know, and you're just being honest. Yep. You're going to get that info. You got a specific time frame. You know who you're going to deliver it to. And then you've got a whole community of peers who can help you. And you go that collect that the, info. Uh, and it is. And you go on about your business. Yeah, that is a one great shout out. I mean, the Tinkerers group, you and I, but I mean, that is just, for me, that's one of those great groups that you can sit down and go, hey, I got a question. That and, and truthfully, LinkedIn as well. There's some amazing people on LinkedIn. Oh yeah. But it's, it's fantastic yeah. just to reach out and say, yeah, I got to, can I pick your brains for 10 minutes? And I mean, I just love it for that one. That's to me, that's like the origins of like the Intel side of things. Just like it, it was, it was the communication and we tend to have forgotten some of that, unfortunately. Yeah. And it's just, you know, uh, like Rick McElroy and I did a whole thing on uh, why the CISO rule sucks and which, what we could do to fix it. You know, and we did this whole thing talking about, you know, all of the issues within the role and and people burning out and a lot of it is yeah it's it's that it's that communications piece it's getting burned out it's not working within the community and being able to share information being able to help each other and that's the big thing that we've been you know really pushing is that you know you're not alone you know many of us are dealing with a lot of these same issues and just like with threat intelligence you gather it from many Mm -hmm. down to ones that you can do something particular within your organization you know, and it's okay to reach out to the community, to many, so that you can impact one. Yeah, very much so. No, I totally love that. Well, we are, we are approaching the top. I would love just some final thoughts from you, like rabbit hole, final thoughts, things you'd wish you'd done, 
general conversation. You know the deal on this one. Just, just some, I'd love some final thoughts from you. You know, some of my, my biggest, you know, issues, and I actually spend time mentoring and teaching people this is, you know, I wish I learned this a long time ago is that, um, you don't have to do it all. Yeah. You, know, right. you and I both know we're in a field, you know, that's really a discipline that's made mm -hmm. up of so many different domains and you're never going to know everything and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a hell of a time when I was, when I was younger in this, in this field. I mean, I'm in my fifth role as a CISO and I've been a CIO twice and I've been a chief privacy officer twice. I mean, I've, I've been at this for quite a while in a lot of different areas. And what I've realized over time is that you don't need to know everything. You know, the, the biggest thing is that, but if you have a solid community and you've got peers that you can reach out to, you can collect the info again, information that you yeah. need to be able to make effective decisions, you know, to be able to protect your organization, to be able to mentor and train and, you know, be a servant leader and take care of your staff to take care of your teams, you know, and that's been the biggest thing for me that I've learned from a rabbit hole perspective is being able to let go of that, you know, being able to say that, you know, Hey, you know, that, that self doubt, that am I not good enough kind of thing. You know, fuck that. Just let that go. Mm -hmm. You know, focus on your people, focus on the mission that you have, you know, use your community and you're going to be okay. Love it. Thank you so very, very much. Hugely, hugely appreciated. Absolutely honored to have you on as well. Danny, as always, you rock. Thank you for sorting out, coordinating, being part of this crazy journey and pretty much so organizing this entire crazy journey. Let's be perfectly honest. And uh, to everybody listening, thank you very much. And we will see you in the dark. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Dr. Dark Web. This show is brought to you by Cyber Six Girl, the threat intelligence company. If you would like to learn more, please feel free to follow or subscribe to Dr. Dark Web on your favorite podcast streamer. Or as an alternative, you can always find us online at cybersixgirl.com slash podcast. You'll find all the latest episodes, goodies, nuggets of information, background, and probably some stickers or two. See you in the dark.